equipment check. What's required? What's recommended? It is good to be back, and we are going to jump right into it. Now, the first thing we need to bring to the table and everyone needs to understand is TRD Off-Road and Pro Trims of the 3rd Gen Tacoma have a different brake system set up that requires different steps. And I'll go over them, but it also requires an additional tool, which we will talk about. Here are some pictures to familiarize yourself with. Next, let's acknowledge that brake fluid can eat right through your paint, so be ready to wipe it away. That crap can eat through the hose. We know it's time to check and maybe replace our brake fluid because per Toyota, we're checking it for clarity and quality every 25,000 miles. All right, let's talk about the Mighty Vac little brake fluid sucker here real quick. So it builds up pressure when you squeeze the uh, handle right here. It's a very simple design. And then at the bottom, once you build up pressure, you can release its trigger right here. Here's its uh, canister that you collect fluid in. It shows which side to plug in to the pump. So the opposite side is going to go to the caliper or the cylinder. And here's how it connects, and it's really that simple. It comes with a bunch of other pieces, but this is all you need that comes with it to do the job. This goes to the caliper cylinder bleeder valve, and that's that. Okay, let's pop our hoods and see what we're working with. TRD Off-Road and Pro models, you're gonna have your time for little into extra steps towards the end, but keep up with us because you're gonna be doing most of this. So we're taking the cap off, and for science, we're gonna take a little sample here. And I'm going to show you why, because I want you to understand what we're doing. That is the key to maintenance, is understanding what we're doing. So I'm collecting some of the dirty fluid, and now I'm going to collect in a separate little baggie some of the clean fluid. So color is not really a good indicator of quality, but it does suggest things such as that darker color has collected contaminants over time. So brake fluid is hygroscopic, meaning it collects moisture from its surroundings for good reason in brake lines. But this is a brake fluid tester showing you how much fluid, excuse me, water is contaminating your fluid. Hey handsome, your water content is below 1%. So that was the clean fluid. Now let's try the dirty fluid and compare. Do you not love me? So you can see it's between 1 and 2% saying it's in fair condition, but time to change. Okay, it is time to drain that fluid reservoir. And there's no perfect tool to take this screen out. Just do your best not to damage it. It can be fragile. But go ahead and use your Mighty Vac. And we're going to simply suck the fluid right out of that reservoir. But always keep that bottle upright. If you overfill it or turn it over and pull the fluid into the vacuum pump, pump is going to be ruined. Refill that reservoir with clean fluid. We're going to go in order of longest to shortest brake lines. So here is the order in which we're going to work with. If your bleeder valve is not torqued down from last time, you can use the open end of the wrench. Otherwise, close is recommended. But just hook up the Mighty Vac, keep the canister upright, and start vacuuming out the fluid. Close it while there's still vacuum uh, from the pump. Pop it off. And then let's go empty out that canister. But here's the steps you need to follow to do it right. Okay, next for the driver rear, I'm going to use, instead of the vacuum pump, this ingenious bleeder bottle. So I'm going to hook it up, then I'm going to open up the bleeder valve, and you can already see it start to fill the line. 
I'm going to gently but firmly pump the brakes and look at it just fill up this bottle. This thing really is great. I'm going to link it below as well. I used that bleeder bottle on the passenger front side as well, but I wanted to show you that I hooked a D-ring to its cable for when the cable does not have a place to loop. So we're finally at the front driver's side and look how crusty this bleeder cap is. Let's fix that. But anyway, I also want to show you this tiny hose clamp. It works much better than a zip tie when it comes to the uh, sealing the vacuum, but it's still, excuse me, still not perfect. In the end, you don't even have to bother with zip ties, but put a new cap on there and follow the same steps and you're good. If you've been following those steps, you've been refilling your reservoir, hopefully, like you should, but uh, let's top it off one last time, put that cap back on there, and now we're going to gently torque down with a proper torque wrench all of our bleeder valves to eight foot pounds. Okay, that's about it. Look for tools or towels carefully under the hood and close up shop. SR, SR5, and sport models, you are done. Off-road and pro models, I put your extra steps at the end. We'll talk about it in a second, but check this out. So, quick break, I thought I'd take a few seconds to show y'all around the shop and actually what's going on here. We try to make it not gimmicky stuff, but things you can actually use, like the maintenance map that shows you from zero to 300,000 what you need to do to keep your truck in perfect shape or you know well maintained you got trackers both third and fourth gen and all the colors and what this is is tracking the date and the mileage you last did those tasks you can get them framed or unframed just like the maps stickers self-explanatory got them all if you're on reddit you probably know what this is but moving on uh, digital items if you want the maps or trackers cheaper i get it here's it digital and the trackers are fillable with drop down dates, etc. So definitely check them out. Uh, cool stuff. Yeah. Ooh, when my wife doesn't steal it, the uh, TOD mug is pretty sweet, actually. Mouse pads, patches, you name it. Um, yeah, none of this, I'm sorry, all of this is actually really high quality. I mean, I've been impressed. I hate hats. I don't wear hats until I got one of these. And now I actually, I wear stinking hats, at least that one. That's the only one I wear now. Um, yeah, but I just wanted y'all to see what's actually going on in the store because there's a lot more than uh, you would you would think. So the other thing I want to quickly cover is if you love the channel, I think you're missing out if you're not in the Discord. There's just so much going on here. We are always helping each other out pretty much all hours of night and because someone's always awake in the garage section. Like we've had two 5100 uh, front lift installs, confused some subscribers before who popped in here. <laughs> Derek... <laughs> Uh, and got answers pretty quick and uh, yeah I think the discord is just really helpful to people and it's growing all the time we even have a classified section now so yeah I think uh, oh yeah contest uh, right now the channel is giving away LED lights that Greg the editor is about to review here shortly so yeah it's real simple rules no uh, no we're never gonna ask for money or anything like that but check out the discord we are looking forward to hanging out with you Okay, finally for the off-road and pro models. I just want to give you a precaution. I've talked to a few Toyota techs before and there have been stories of those that try to do these steps correctly or maybe they, did the, they didn't follow these steps. They just thought they were bleeding brakes normally or replacing fluid normally. They actually introduced air in the system and had to limp their truck to the dealership for the dealership to do it right. Unfortunately, you guys do need a scan tool that I'm going to link a budget and a high-end version, both that will do the same job. Uh, I'll link them below. But I just need you to understand that it is a very doable task in your driveway. You just have to follow the right steps, and here they are. So, good luck. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out, and I'll see you all again soon. Oh, you're still here and not in the Discord. Weird.